In video number six of our SAT boot camp, we're going to talk about decimals. So we've talked about fractions. It's about time we talk about decimals. So what is a decimal? Well, let's first remember how to label each of the places uh, in a number that contains decimal, or even doesn't have to contain a decimal, but at least for this example, it will. So let's say 234.706. And obviously, this can extend either way in either direction. Now, this number right here, this is called the units digit, or the ones digit, either one. This number here is called the tens digit. This is the hundreds digit, and so on, right? This would be the thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and so on. How about the other direction? Well, this would be the tenths digit. This one right here would be the hundredths digit. This one right here would be the thousand thousandths digit, then you get the ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and so on. Uh, so remember these because there's some problems that ask you either to round to say the nearest tenths, or other problems that we'll talk about. The units digit is this, the tens digit is that, what is the hundredth digit, stuff like that. So you should remember these definitions. But a decimal is essentially out of ten. That's what a decimal means, which is why this is in a kind of a base ten system. Um, when you go say you have 0.09 and you go up one more here it becomes 0.10 right so decimals you can probably tell by the prefix dec dec means out of 10 now the thing with decimals is that uh, they've got a few interesting properties now when we add them so say 0.023 plus 0.0 3, 2. What you see I've done here automatically is I've lined up the decimal point. They're not going to do that for you automatically. A problem would be something like this. You've got to be very careful that you line up your decimal places, whether you're either subtracting or, multi or, or adding, uh, so you can add them properly by hand. Again, you can do it by your calculator, but uh, doing it by hand, or at least memory how to do it by hand, can be useful. When you multiply them, you just put them into your calculator. There's really, I mean, you could do this by hand, but it's just so awful and so long and you can make more mistakes doing it by hand that really your calculator is the best pet here. So if you multiply this out, uh, I don't know what you get. I mean, I can figure it out pretty quickly. Um, 0.023 times 0.0032 gives us, okay, 0 .0 0 0 uh, So And then you can do the same thing with dividing. You just put it into your calculator. A few interesting things, like with a fraction, when we do a half times 3 quarters, this gets us something like um, 3 over 8. Notice that is smaller than both 3 quarters and a half, right? When you multiply fractions, they go down. When you divide fractions, so say 1 half divided by 1 quarter, that's going to be 2. When you divide fractions, they go up. And the same thing happens here with decimals uh, as well. Now, this is something you should really try to memorize because if you can remember the relationship between fractions and decimals here with multiplying and dividing, it can really help you not only figure out problems but also get an intuitive sense on a problem when you've got an answer that doesn't make sense or is too big or too small. So, a decimal times a decimal, just like with a fraction, will make the number go down. So, in this case, we had, let's do another one, 0.1 times 0.1. If we do that, we're going to get, I think, 0.01, right? 0.1 times 0.1, oops, try that again, 0.1 times 0 0.1, 0 0.01, right? So this answer goes down from the original choices, right? So whenever we multiply decimals, they go down. How about dividing? So let's do 0.1 divided by 0.01. What do we get when we do that? Well, let's see, 0.1 divided by 0 0.01 gets us 10. So you can see when we divide decimals, the number goes up. So this is something to keep in mind. Whenever you multiply by a decimal, the number goes down. When you divide by a decimal, the number goes up. And this also applies for your fractions as well. How about converting fractions to decimals? Well, this is pretty easy to do. You just pop out your calculator, enter the fraction into your calculator. So let's say it was something like 1 over 4. In your calculator, you would enter 1 divided by or divided by 4. And this gets you 0.25. How about something like 3 over 7? Well, let's see. Clear this out. 3 divided by 7 is going to be 0.4285, blah, blah, blah. So we'll say 0.4286 when we round up. And so on, right? So a fraction to a decimal is pretty easy. You just go from 0.4, you just enter these guys into the calculator, and then you got your decimal. Now, in another video later, we're going to talk about fractions, decimals, and percents, and how to do the interconversions between them. But for now, this is a uh, 
a good one to remember. There's some decimals and fractions you should remember. So like one quarter is 0.25, one half is 0.5, three quarters is 0.75. And there may be a few more, but you don't have to memorize these as much just because you can just put them into your calculator and, and that's it. Remember, if you have a decimal that repeats, so something like 0.3, so one third is 0.33333 forever, you can just write this as 0.33 repeating. You can write this like this, you can write it like this, or like this. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can write it. The thing is, for the SAT's purposes, you're never really going to have to write these. And I don't even know if you'll see them like this. Um, the one exception is for the grid-ins when you've got a grid-in, things like this, and uh, we can talk about that in another video. I think I do in the, in the Math Strategies video of my SAT's Foundation series that you just slice it off. But we won't get into that. Just so you remember, just in case you ever see it, this is just means repeating that repeating number, repeating decimal. Uh, let's see, the last thing to discuss will be scientific notation. Now let's say we had a number, and this applies not only for decimals, but also for um, big numbers too. So let's start with a big number, like 60, 600,000. So we could write it like this, but the problem with this is we could start losing track of our zeros. So we want a way to keep track of um, our numbers without having to write out this many zeros. And this becomes especially a, a big problem when you're dealing with really big numbers with 10 or 11 zeros or 10 or 11 units or uh, spaces. Uh, so what do we do? Well, we write it in terms of what's called scientific notation. And basically what you do is you take your number, 6. And then you say it's times 10, because each one of these 10s gives you a 0. And you do times 10 to the exponent number of zeros you have. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be 6 times 10 to the 5. Now, how do I know this works? Well, we can put this to a calculator, and we'll get this. I'd also see this, that 6 times 10 to the 1 is 60, right? You just put that in your calculator. 6 times 10 to the 2 is 600. 6 times 10 to the 3 is 6,000, and so on, right? All the way to 6 times 10 to the 5 would be 600,000. Uh, another way to look at this is, imagine if you had 6.0 as your decimal. Each one of these times 10 units moves the decimal point over 1. So 6 times 10 to the 1 would be 60, right? Right here. 6 times 10 to the 2 would be 600. 6 times 10 to the 3 would be 1, 2, 3, 6,000. Right? And then finally, your last number here would be 6 times 10 to the 5 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's your decimal. You put in your zeros, and we get back our 600,000. Now, you can as well do this in the opposite direction. So let's say we had something like 0. 0.000003. Well, we could do the same thing. We would do 3, but now since we're going to the left, we've got to multiply it by 10 to the negative exponent number of decimal points there are. So something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6, so it would be 3 times 10 to the minus 6. Why is it minus 6? Well, remember your exponent rules. This is just the same thing as 3 times 1 over 10 to the 6, which is the same thing as 3 divided by 10 to the 6th. And this means move the decimal point over to the left. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops. Right, so this would be 7. My bad because it's moving this this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is 7 and 7, because you don't count just the zeros in this case. You've got to count this original jump here as well. Um, let me see if there's anything else to discuss. Uh, that's pretty much all you need for the SAT. If this was a little confusing, I went through it quick, I know, because reason why is this is not really on the SAT that much. At most, you'll see one question, if you'll see any at all. Uh, it's something you'll use for science, so if you're taking something like chemistry or physics, uh, you'll probably be a little more familiar with it. For the SAT, it's not that important. Um, just to do one more example with these decimals, 0. 0.0025. Well, this would just be, I mean, there's a lot of ways to write this, but probably the easiest way to write this is 1, 2, 3, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So you see I start here and I just move to the right. You could also do this as 25 times 10 to the minus 4, right? Just extend it one more. Or you could do 1, 2, this is a little weird, but 0.2 times 10 to the minus 2, right? Uh, it's all about where you move that decimal point. Uh, and that's pretty much it for scientific notation, and that should be it for decimals.